I wanted to quickly talk about um, unlearning and re relearning, uh, and you know, the time is pretty short, so it will be very much giving you a small flavor of some of the work uh, we've been doing, but I'd be very happy to um, discuss things in details afterwards. So why might we be interested in uh, unlearning? <clears throat> I guess uh, a lot of people in this community are interested in uh, uh, developing and building systems that are you know, trustworthy, uh, truthful, and helpful. So unlearning allows you to do things like uh, removing harmful responses, er erasing copy, uh, right protected data that most of these models are trained on, uh, or reducing hallucination or ha hazardous capabilities as um, some of these models might have such capabilities. So um, an intuitive way to understand unlearning is pretty much um, like RLHF, but the way unlearning works is that you're trying to prevent the model from being helpful. So if you have a question that is um, uh, hazardous or, uh, or dangerous, you don't want the model to, to answer. So uh, in an essence, you, um, you also want to be able to do unlearning in a way that you don't have to retrain the, the entire model from scratch. So if you are an, are an artist and your data has been used to train, uh, train models, and you request the you know, frontier model providers to remove those data, you want them to be able to do this in a way that they don't have to retrain the entire, the entire model. So uh, here is a mouthful figure for one of the uh, recent uh, unlearning um, methodology that was put forward but in the uh, weapons of mass uh, destruction benchmark. And uh, the way this approach works is, um, is, is pretty um, straightforward. So you have this um, train and forget term. So the train term is basically you want to train the model um, such that it con contains and, 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 and keeps the basic knowledge uh, one is required to have about certain topics. So think about cyber or biology or chemistry. Uh, you want the model to be trained uh, with these tokens from the distribution of re re retain. This could be you know, uh, Wikipedia of biology or, or, or cybersecurity. But on the other hand, you have this um, forget terms. So you basically prompt the model with this, with this prompt, like you're a novice in, let's say, virology, um, and you want to extract what are the novice representations the model will have about virology. Uh, and then you also can prompt the model with something, something like you're an expert in virology and you look at uh, the representation the model um, will generate for, um, for virology. And then the unlearning is basically uh, forget plus novice mi minus ex expert. So you, you want to do unlearning such that you want to keep this um, novice representation, the basic representation that are required for anyone to do anything with, uh, with those models. So here, the, the goal that I'm trying to pursue is to give you a very basic um, intuitive understanding of how unlearning might work, because I'm going to move and actually tell you that whenever you do any sort of unlearning, um, models actually have the capacity to relearn those removed concepts. So this is joint work with um, Michelle and Shai. So if you have approaches for unlearning or making sure models are uh, edited or, or pruned in ways that uh, undesired concepts or behavior do not exist. How tr uh, ro truly robust are these methods? Can we, be sh can we be sure that those concepts or behaviors will not reappear when downstream users will inevitably modify these models to a certain degree to make it um, useful for their, for their own tasks? So. Uh, again, here's another somewhat uh, com uh, complicated look looking figure for you, but in essence what, what we try to do here is that we take a base model and we fine tune it for a, for a specific task and we then identify um, really strong salient concept that exists in, in that model and we then prune this concept and then we retrain it until it achieves some sort of performance in some, some sort of arbitrary task and we tr then try to figure out what happened to the concept that we try to remove or prune away. Uh, and you can think of this as the task shouldn't be that imp important because these large models are pretty much trained on the entire internet. So they, pr they have pretty much seen everything that, 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 that there is to be seen. Um, 
I think this is beyond the point. Um, and what, what, do we, what we find is, uh, is that the neurons that we have um, erased or pruned are actually uh, really important for models' ability to, to, to do learning. And this figure basically uh, describes that. So, and maybe something uh, unintuitive that we find in this, in this uh, set of experiments is that concepts are usually formed towards the later uh, stages of uh, learning. Uh, when you prune these concepts, they are uh, redistributed and they re uh, reappear in early layers, which is uh, counter counterintuitive. So um, here's a bunch of results. And we also show that basically, um, if you don't prune um, significantly uh, salient neurons, you don't get a really good representation of how relearning might, might, might appear. So um, we also uh, show that um, the neurons that are um, able to recapture the, the distribution of uh, pruned concepts are primed for relearning. So the neuron that represents now the concept of a location name that was pruned is now captured by uh, a neuron that initially represented per people's names or some sort of other adjective names. Um, more results. Um, and yeah, so I guess maybe um, what all of these um, experiments uh, probe us is to think about how do we actually unlearn undesired concepts such that when models are adjusted slightly for downstream tasks, uh, we are sure that they cannot reappear. Or is there a way for us to restrict this unlearning just to the novice sets of representational parameters? Thank you. Um, yeah, do you have thoughts on connections to other literature, like um, other works showing that uh, various fine-tuning methods, supervised or DPO, seem to only produce superficial changes, or other literature seeming to show that if you try to, um, like safety-tuned models seem easy to like fine-tune so that the safety tuning goes away? Yeah, I guess there's a lot of work in this area that show that you can easily bypass these uh, safety rail guards and fine tuning. And this is something that I'm, I'm still trying to figure out. What are the m most effective ways that you can put this rail guard such that no um, sa uh, fine tuning can actually get rid of them? Thanks. Thanks. I don't know if you explored this connection yet to differentially private training and with respect to how much it actually learns about individual concepts and how easy or difficult it is to unlearn afterwards. But I just want to promo a paper that isn't mine, but is probably one of my favorites. It's called the Privacy Onion. So essentially, they, they do something very similar. They treat the privacy of individuals as the onion layer. So once you remove the most privacy sensitive and the most vulnerable one, the next layer gets picked up by the model and the model kind of relearns and makes the next layer even more privacy sensitive than before. So I kind of think it might be interesting for you to also explore that direction because they've already shown that irrespective of setting, model, parameters, differentially private, you know, hyperparameters, etc., the model will eventually switch to learning more undesired stuff if you remove a specific part of, you know, the data set or in your case, the specific concepts that you're trying to unlearn. But, you know, we can discuss this and maybe like write a paper on this or whatever. Great, yeah, thank you. Yeah, that's interesting. Maybe write a paper or whatever. Okay. Uh, all right. I'm curious. Thank you for the presentation. Uh, I'm curious. Have you looked at other tasks? Uh, you mentioned any general or any specific task. Uh, have you looked at others than named entity recognition here? So we have actually run some further experiments on, on um, uh, you know, it's, it's a follow-up work that should come out soon, where we try to. Uh, test our hypothesis where models have some sort of geopolitical understanding. So we are still very much in the same paradigm where we try to, for example, remove um, names of countries that are either friendly with their neighbors or, or not friendly with their neighbors. And the idea here is that does models have understanding that if neuron A um, captures and represents the concept of United States and we remove Canada, does A recapture and represent Canada. 
and now you can take this further away and you know explore relationships with different countries in the Middle East where you know this relationship might not exist. So how does models, you know, underlying structure deal with our geopolitical understanding of how things are represented? Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.